In today's lesson, we are continuing to determine the gradient of a tangent at a point using first principles. Example 1. Determine the derivative from first principles if the function is given as x squared plus 3x. Here you need to realize that from first principles implies that you have to use your new formula. The given function here is a parabola, and for a parabola, the gradient changes constantly. Just like in the example in the previous lesson, I'm going to start off only calculating the numerator. For this, I'm going to take my function, which is x squared plus 3x, and instead of x, I'm going to substitute it with x plus h. So everywhere there was an x, I'm going to have x plus h. And from this, I'm now going to subtract the original function, and fx was x squared plus 3x. And from here, it is algebraic simplification, so I'm going to start off multiplying out the bracket squared. Then I multiply in the 3, and I multiply in the minus. Next, we can add up all the like terms. So we'll end up with 2xh plus h squared plus 3h. And now we can substitute this into the complete formula. So we are going to calculate the limit as h approaches 0. And our numerator is now 2xh plus h squared plus 3h. And this has to be divided by h. To calculate a limit, we would want to substitute the h with 0, because in this case h is approaching 0. But we cannot substitute that yet, because then we'll have a 0 in the denominator. This means we'll first have to simplify a bit further by factorizing the numerator and taking out h as a common factor. Then we can say h divided by h is 1, and now we can calculate the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h plus 3. And as I've mentioned, to calculate a limit, we need to substitute h with 0. So we will have 2x plus 0 plus 3. And this means that our derivative, or f prime x, is 2x plus 3. I'm reminding you that f prime x is also called the derivative, and that it calculates the gradient of the tangent at any point on a function. And because in our example we have a parabola, and the parabola's gradient changes constantly, we can see that we've now calculated an abstract answer. This 2x plus 3 represents the gradient of the tangent at any point on this parabola. If we now choose to focus on one specific point on this parabola, let's say we focus on a value of x is 1, and if we now go and draw a tangent at x is 1, we can calculate the gradient of that tangent by taking the derivative and substituting 1. This will give us a value of 5, and this means that the tangent at x is equal to 1 has a gradient of 5. Example 2. Determine the derivative from first principles if the function x cubed plus 4 is given. So again, I'm starting by only determining the numerator. So to calculate f of x plus h, I'm going to take my function, which is x cubed plus 4, and I'm going to substitute x with x plus h. And from this, I'm going to subtract the original given function. To simplify, I'm going to start by breaking up the three brackets and multiplying two of them. And if I do this, I will get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And this still has to be multiplied by the third of the three brackets. And I will multiply in the minus in my block bracket. Next, I have to multiply all three terms in my first bracket with the two terms in the second bracket. And the rest of the expression can be simplified by adding up and having minus x cubed left. And then again we have like terms that we can add up. So my simplified numerator is 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. 
and this will be substituted into the complete formula. We want to calculate the limit as h is approaching 0. We've just calculated the numerator and that has to be divided by h. But now we'll have to factorize first so that we can get rid of that h in the denominator. So I'm going to take out h as a common factor in my numerator. Then simplify by saying h divided by h is 1 and then calculating the limit as h approaches 0 of 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared. And to calculate this limit, I'm going to substitute h with 0, so it becomes 3x squared plus 3x times 0 plus 0 squared. And then we are left with only 3x squared as our derivative. Example 3. Determine the derivative from first principles if fx is equal to 2 over x. So again, we are going to have to use our formula, and I'm going to start off calculating the numerator. So for f of x plus h, I'm going to have 2 divided by, and instead of x, x plus h, minus the original function, which is simply 2 over x. Next, we are going to add up fractions by getting a common denominator, and that denominator will consist of the x of the second fraction and the x plus h of the first fraction. And then we have to adapt our numerators according to this new denominator. The first fraction's 2 should still be multiplied with the x in the numerator, and the second fraction's 2 in the numerator should still be multiplied by x plus h. Now I can multiply the minus 2 into the bracket, and once I've added up my like terms, I'll be left with minus 2h divided by x times x plus h. This now represents the numerator of our formula. And because I now have a fraction in my numerator, I'm going to prefer to first simplify further before I substitute into the formula. So I'm first going to take this numerator and divide it by h. And because my numerator is also now a fraction, I'm going to write the divided by h next to it as divided by h. And algebraically, we know that that is divided by h over 1, which we can rewrite as times by 1 over h. Next, we can once again simplify by saying h divided by h is 1, and we'll be left with minus 2 over x times x plus h. And finally, I can now substitute this into my formula for derivative. So when I substitute here, I will calculate the limit as h is approaching 0 of minus 2 over x times x plus h. There is no more simplification needed, so I can now calculate my limit by substituting h with 0. And when I do the substitution, I leave the limit out because I'm now calculating the limit. And the derivative will then be minus 2 divided by x squared.